Okay, so as you can see the posters that we have around the room, I told you that they're there for a reason. They're connected to a math idea. By the end of our notes today, you're gonna know what three of those ideas are. We're starting off with two column notes. So about where you put the P in your title, draw a line going straight down your page. On the left side, we're going to write the first property we're talking about today, which is commutative property. There's really nothing that I'm going to be showing you today that you guys haven't already done in math in the past. We're just giving the names to the things that you've done before. In commutative property, it's a rule that gives us permission to move numbers. Commutative property works with two operations in math. It works with addition and multiplication. Let's go ahead and list the two things it doesn't work with, and then we're gonna cross them out to give ourselves a visual reminder that it does not work with subtraction or division. And by writing them down, we'll circle them and put a slash through, showing it does not work with these. An example I'm going to have you write down for addition is six plus seven plus four. We add things from left to right. But if I asked you to solve this mentally right now, you'd probably look at this and think, there's two numbers I wish were next to each other. Those two numbers would be six and four, because six and four make 10. And 10 makes our math easier to do. Remember, when we talked about our syllabus and I had those eight math practices, I told you we like our shortcuts in math. This is a rule that lets us take shortcuts. In your head, you could figure this out, but I'm just showing you visually so you know on paper what it would look like. You in your head would do six plus four first, and then add the seven, because six and four is 10, and then you could easily figure out that it's 17 in your head. By moving those numbers so we get six and four next to each other, we just use what's called the commutative property. It also works with multiplication, so let's put an example down here. Four times six times 25. When I look at that, I want the four and the 25 together. Not because multiplying four times six is hard. I know you guys know that that's 24, but I can't, I can't do 24 times 25 in my head, and I teach math. Um, I can, though, if I move these two numbers and I slide that 25 next to the 4, I can now easily do this problem in my head because I know 4 times 25 is 100 and 100 times 6 is 600. Way, way easier than trying to figure out what 24 times 25 is. So the commutative property, the ability to move numbers in addition to multiplication, lets us put what we call friendly numbers together. Numbers that make doing the math easier work together. Let's draw a line under that. And I'm going to take you into our second property, the associative property. Associative property also works with addition and subtraction. It does not work with subtraction and division. We'll leave this visual off though to save some space on our paper. Associative property is all about groups. We can group numbers to make it easier to solve the problem. With associative property, we're not moving any numbers. Moving numbers happens with commutative property, but we're grouping them differently. And we make the group based on what works well for us. 
So here's the same problem grouped two different ways. In the first one, I'm going to put parentheses around 8 times 5. And that says we're going to multiply those first because we always do what's in parentheses first. In the second problem, instead of 8 times 5, I'm going to group 5 times 2. And this really is a case where it's your personal preference. Whenever I see something that can be multiplied by into 10, I try to go for that. <clears throat> so in this case, I would do the 10 first times 8. I can easily figure out that it's 80 in my head. This one's still pretty simple, though. You might look at this and go, well, I know what 8 times 5 is, and I'm just multiplying it by 2, so I like this group. 8 times 5 is 40, times 2 gives us 80. Both of these get to the right answer. It's just what makes it easier for you. Did I move any numbers in this one? No. I've got 8, I have 5, I have 2. It's where I put my parentheses. So the associative property is all about the parentheses those groups. Let's just take a quick break and take a peek at the posters. Which poster do you think is associative property? Go ahead and just point. Which one do you think is commutative property that moves numbers? Okay, we've got some good guesses. How about if we put a picture with this to clarify? This is math art skills because we're going to use geometric shapes. Draw a rectangle here. <clears throat> Inside your rectangle on the left side, draw three small squares. And then we're going to put a tall rectangle right here. And a small rectangle here. And two circles here. What do we have? Bus. Buses move people. The commutative property lets us move numbers. People who ride the bus to work and back, they're called commuters. It comes from the same root. Commuters are commuting. They're moving back and forth. With these numbers, we're just moving them to a new spot. Okay. We have one more property we're going to explore today. It is the identity property. And again, you guys already know this. You probably just didn't know it had a fancy name. You can do it with multiplication. And we have an identity property of addition. With multiplication, when we multiply by 1, we're using the identity property. With addition, when we add 0, that's the identity property. What happens if I multiply by 1? I get the same answer, right? What happens when I add 0? Same answer. So both of these give us the same number. And we refer to them when we're talking about them in a fancy way. The identity property of multiplication is when I multiply by 1. The identity property of addition is when I add 0. An example would be if I did 64 plus 0, I'm going to get 64. If I'm going to multiply 1,263 times 1, I'm going to get 1,263. Point to the poster you think is identity property. Which of these five do you think is for identity? 